So there's the uh, sign for the Astoria, as if you needed any proof that this is a real deal. There you go, you can see most of the streets being cordoned off. There's the entranceway, looking even worse than usual. Uh, there's two guys smashing hell out of the Bureau de Change next door. This is a high-class Bureau de Change! Um, oh look, someone's written something. Um, in case you can't see, it says uh, that uh, Tony Blair and Ken Livingston are cunts and fuck off Crossrail. Hey, black kids. I like black kids. They're good. And there's, there's another notice there. Goodbye, Astoria. We love you. Hmm. And uh, just, <laughs> just for reference, this is a chip shop on the corner. Uh, never been in there myself. And uh, this is the trench they're digging around the outside. Let's see, memories that stick out in my mind about the Astoria. Um, one of the things I'll never forget is um, being at a gig and uh, the gig was finished and there's this guy who was just being really slow about leaving the dance floor. You know, there was no music going on, I mean he was just standing around. Um, I think he was waiting for a friend or something. Um, and the bouncers came up to him and just basically told him to you know, get going. I think I think he was just a bit stroppy, basically. So this whole gang of bouncers just set about this guy and beat the crap out of him for <laughs> in the middle of the in the middle of the dance floor. You know, I mean, he wasn't being violent. He wasn't threatening anyone. He wasn't a danger to anyone. He was just being a bit of an arsehole, You know, which, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's not good. But it, it doesn't deserve getting beaten up, right? Um, oh, happy days at the Astoria. <laughs> Um, I don't know, Maurice. Um, uh, oh, yes, um, went to see Ash there one time. And, uh, you know, I, I often like to catch the support bands at gigs. Um, and I'm really glad I've caught the support band at this, this gig. Um, and, sorry, that's my... Hey, Pops. Do you, do you want to be on camera? Hey, Pops, what do you think? Do you want to do, do lol cats? Lol cat? No. Not interested? Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, so I went to see Ash after the second album, and, um, and you know, because the second album wasn't all that well received, it hadn't come out with the third album yet. There was this, it didn't sell out. Um, it was virtually empty in there. And so I was actually standing um, downstairs uh, to see a support band uh, who I'd never heard of before called Muse. And uh, I have to say, I mean, they were just fantastic muse. Just, they were just mind-blowingly good. Um, and this, this is before, um, what's, his, what's his name, Lee Singer, uh, Matt, something right up. Um, I can't remember. I mean, now if you see them, he's always playing the fucking piano like Freddie Mercury, but at the time, you know, they were a rock band. I mean, this guy was playing guitar. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't fucking around with all these other keyboards and stuff. Just amazing. Just really, really great. Yeah. Um, and you know, Ash came on and um, they, they, they didn't look like a happy band, you know. I mean, they hadn't sold they out, they were kind of struggling along, and then they had to follow Muse. <laughs> the poor bastards. <laughs> it's, it's, it's tragic, really. Now, I have to say, I saw British Seeker and they did do a storming set. I mean, they, they really did. But um, I can't say I was entirely convinced, actually. I did, I, actually, no, that's not true. I did go out and buy the album. Ooh, let's see. Oh, Cardiacs twice. You know, and, um, you know, sadly, um, it looks like the Cardiacs uh, won't be playing again. But I, saw, I got to see them twice and they were, they were tremendously good. I was very pleased with that. Um, Motorhead. Um, um, I'm going to struggle to remember now, aren't I? Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've seen a lot of gigs. Um, um, filter, that was pretty empty. Ministry, that was pretty empty. I, I think, I think the, uh, <laughs> the thing to bear in mind there is if you're an industrial act, don't, don't play the story, because it'll be empty. Who else? Oh, I remember um, seeing Ben Falls 5 there. I'm sure I must have seen Pop Lee itself there. Actually, that's something I just can't get over now. It's the idea of Clint from Pop Lee itself being like a big uh, mu movie music bigwig. 
guy. I mean, I mean the soundtrack for The Wrestler is played by Slash, right? but it's written by Clint Manson. Now, if you'd asked me back in 1989 if they thought that Clint Mansell would be telling Slash what to play, right? They would have thought you were fucking mental, right? I mean, that's, it's just, I mean, it's, it's, it just makes belief, doesn't it? Sort of therapy there. Um, saw Fountains of Wayne. Not much to say about that, really. Teenage Fan Club, they were good, you know? Um, because the, the LA2 is going as well. How can I forget that? I think I'm actually quite, I'm, I'm much more sad about the LA2 going than, uh, than the uh, Astoria. You know, smaller venues, you know, you miss them more, don't you? Saw Matthew Sweet there a couple of times. Wednesday 13, saw him there a few times. In fact, I remember seeing Gwar at uh, LA2 as well. And you know, Gwar are just Gwar. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's just people in ridiculous monster costumes and syringes and God knows what. Uh, and just blood squirting everywhere. Um, but they, they were they were supported bizarrely enough by a German metal band called uh, In Extremo, and and they were these muscle bound guys in uh, wearing kilts. I, I, you know, that freaked me that freaked me out more than gore. Quite honestly, it was just weird. I mean, they had bagpipes and everything. I mean, you know, it wasn't just the kilts. You know. Oh, one of the best gigs of my life at the LA Two actually, uh, Jesus is it. Oh man, awesome, absolutely, colossally brilliant, I mean just fantastic. Yeah, uh, what's his name, David Yao, he's just, I mean, you know, every time you see him, he just boggles the mind, you know, I mean not only are they just, you know, the, the stuff they're playing is great, but um, yeah, David Yao is just crazy, he's a crazy man. You know, the LA2, I mean, he gets on top of this speaker stack, 16, 18 feet high. He just climbs up on top of that and then just jumps into the crowd and it and, and sinks like a stone. <laughs> it just, it just jumps off into the crowd and just whoosh, disappears. Well, you know, you have these guys at the front of the stage controlling the crowd, you know, so he, this guy goes out. He goes out into the crowd, stop pushing through to find this singer, right? And this bouncer goes out there. And next thing you know, this bouncer just disappears. And he gets up off the floor and he's, he's got David Yao, he's like, yeah, kind of attached to him, limpet-like, <laughs> not letting him go, with his microphone in his hand, <laughs> singing or yelping or whatever you want to call it. This is awesome, this is great, I mean it's just, you know, it's not often you get a band that, that uh, have, have, have singers like that really. No, she's she's just she's just smelling my armpits. It's lovely. What's that stupid satanic band? <laughs> Venom. I uh, saw them. They were all right, I suppose. Oh, that's another memory of the London Astoria, not the LA2. The London Astoria. I went to see Ramstein there, and uh, got there, and the uh, she's going crazy. Uh, <laughs> went to see Ramstein there, and got to the doors, and it was shut. The bloody thing was shut, and there's a sign on the on the outside, like a hastily printed sign, just stuck up there. I said it had been cancelled. The gig had been cancelled. Um, Bramstein were using a lot of pyrotechnics in, in their shows, right? And nobody had, had, had thought to tell the local council this, right? Until the very last minute. So presumably these guys from Ramstein crew started setting up all this gear. And the people who own the venue must have been like, well, what's this? What's that? What are you doing with that? You know, what, why are you setting fire to that thing there? Yeah. Um, so they got the council around, health and safety. And they basically said, um, no, you, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Um, oh, that bit where you set fire to your arm? Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> but you, you know, that thing with the rockets going across the hall? No, you can't do that. <laughs> the bit where you're shooting fiery spunk out of a big metal cock, yeah, you can do that, but you, you can't do the thing with the rockets. But yeah, but basically, so they decided, look, you know, if we can't do all this stuff, then just fuck it. We're just not going to do the gig. Actually, I, do, I don't blame them, though, you know. I mean, when I did eventually see them at Brixton, it was a great show. It was really good, you know. I mean, I know it's a bit lame to go on about how, you know, the pyrotechnics look great and all that kind of 
perfect, but they, but they did. <laughs> That's the thing, you know. They did. The whole thing with um, the Astoria. I mean, the Astoria, you know, it hasn't had many gigs there recently. There just haven't been many gigs at the Astoria lately. Um, most of the gigs now seem to be either at the Forum in Kentish Town, which I have to say now is, is a great venue, much better than the Astoria. Um, the Hammersmith Apollo, which it, it's again, you know, it, it's, you know, it's much better than the London Astoria. So I have to be honest, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to miss it that much, <laughs> sadly. But um, anyway, those are my memories. Um, I hope this has been, well, I hope it hasn't been too tedious to listen to. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video footage earlier. Thanks a lot.